Today we are making paella de verduras, which is a vegetable-centric paella that comes from Valencia, Spain. And as Becky's going to show us, it really is all about pulling those vegetables to the front of the recipe, right? That's right. We're going to really showcase those vegetables. Instead of using them to just flavor the rice, they're going to take center stage and we'll come up with something that is just as satisfying, just as eye-catching as a protein version. Love it. You can make this with a whole lot of vegetables, but we're going to start with cauliflower. Mm. It has a really nice nutty taste and sort of a crisp, creamy density when it's cooked. It's right. really, really satisfying to eat. We're going to start by heating up the skillet here. I have one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to do some medium heat. And Paella is traditionally cooked over a live fire on a paella, mm -hmm. which is a wide, shallow skillet. But it's also very common to see stovetop versions. Perfect. So we need two and a half inch to two inch pieces. I like to just kind of dive in there with my fingers. Stalks and florets. Yeah, just a little bit of the stalk. We're going to leave most of the stalk behind here okay. for this recipe because we're really going for something that's super attractive. And if they're hard to pull off, you can just use a little paring knife here. Yeah, sometimes they just don't want to leave that stock. That's right. They don't want to go in my paella. I don't know why. <laughs> it's going to be delicious in there. So we're going for two and a half cups here. And the pieces can be two inches to two and a half inches, something like that. Wow, so they really are quite large, yeah. Nice and chunky here. So we'll call that one cup. We'll get these in. We need one more cup. OK. A quarter teaspoon of salt just to flavor those guys up a little bit. All right. And now we want the cauliflower to get spotty brown. That's going to take three to five minutes. OK. All right, so it's been five minutes. Oh, beautiful. And it wasn't gorgeous already? It's gorgeous already. Really nice browning. That's the whole paella. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be adding some beans. And Valencians would typically add two types of beans to this recipe. They would add the bajoqueta, which is a flat, fresh green bean, kind of like a Romano bean. OK. Yep. And they would add a garrafon, which is a fresh shell bean. Now, those are hyper-regional varieties, and we can't find them around here. So we found some nice substitutes. All right. Starting with good old conventional green beans. Runner beans. <laughs> can't go wrong. And they go. That's six ounces, and they're cut in two to two and a half inch pieces. OK. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt, season those guys up a little bit. And we're going to let this go for another two to four minutes, just until the green beans start to turn dark green. Really developing flavor here. That's right. So it's been like three minutes. The green beans have started to do their thing. They're getting darker and a little bit of browning. So let's transfer them to a bowl here. They can hang out until the next phase. All right. Now I have another one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now we're going to build a sofrito. This is where we really start to get in all that layered flavor that makes it so good. And we're going to start with one red bell pepper. That is finely chopped. Yeah, it's nice and chopped. Still medium heat here. All right, I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt, season that up. And we'll just let this sizzle here for about seven minutes. And we're looking for a little color? A little bit of browning on the okay. pepper. Yep. Smells good. Uh, flavors just keep adding up in here. It's been about seven minutes. You can see they're nicely browned here. So let's start by adding a tablespoon of tomato paste. And we're going to cook that for about a minute. We just want the pepper pieces to get nicely coated here. And that adds really nice umami depth to the sofrito. OK, so here is three garlic cloves minced up. Half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Other magic ingredient. Yes, love that. And a quarter teaspoon of saffron. Mm. And that just adds that beautiful golden color. And that's the whole paycheck. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> My treat. <laughs> so just for 30 seconds here until we start to smell that aroma, which I do. That smell is our cue that it's time to keep moving here. This is a quarter cup of dry sherry. Just want to cook that until all the excess moisture evaporates. All right, all of our moisture is just about evaporating. So now it's finally time for the rice. So a cup of rice. You can use calasparra or bamba. Both are really nice Spanish rices. OK. If you can't find those, it's also OK to use arborio. All right. Now we're just going to stir this for one or two minutes. We want all those grains of rice to get nicely coated in that beautiful sofrito. Mm. Oh, yeah. So now we're going to smooth out that rice in a nice even layer. And now we have butter beans that are going to go on top. This is our second bean. Remember I mentioned we had the green yes. beans. And now this is one can of butter beans that's been drained. You really want to seek out these butter beans. Their size is 
perfect for this. You don't want to use small white beans here. You're going for another ingredient like the cauliflower that is toothsome and meaty. We want some decent sized pieces here. We're not fooling around. This is like the real deal. <laughs> All right, so there's our butter beans, and now here's the cauliflower and the green beans that we prepared. Use my hands because I want these to be nicely scattered. Well, it's really interesting how you're layering everything on top of each other. That's right. So now I have three and a half cups of chicken broth. I'm just gonna gently pour that in. If you wanna make this purely vegetarian, it's fine to use a vegetable broth here, too. All right, so we want the rice to be completely submerged here. I'm gonna turn up the heat bring this up to a boil, and then I'll lower the heat and we'll let this simmer until the liquid is just below the top of the rice. So it's been about 15 minutes and you can see, we're starting to see the rice here kind of poke through that liquid. That's right. It smells amazing. So we're just gonna pop a lid on for five minutes and we're gonna finish cooking that rice all the way through. This is a very fast cooking paella. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it's been five minutes, and you can see our rice is cooked through. Mm, so that's steaming. Also cook the vegetables through, right? That's right, everything is gonna be just perfecto here. Now we're gonna let it go for another five to seven minutes. We want all of the moisture to evaporate, and we wanna to start to hear some popping and sizzling. Mm. That's gonna indicate that the rice on the bottom of the skillet is starting to brown a little bit. That's the best part. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, we are just about done here. Now we're just gonna make that sokarat, which is the crispy layer of brown rice and the brown proteins and sugars from the cooking liquid that forms on the bottom of the skillet. It is one of the most important parts of a paella. Yes, absolutely. All right, so I finished up that sakarat by rotating the pan a quarter turn for every 20 seconds for about five minutes until it got nice and crusty on the bottom. Mm. Then I slid it off the heat to let it cool down just for five minutes. That's important because the starches in the rice are flexible when they're hot. So when they cool down, they crystallize, they become a little bit more rigid, and that makes the rice nice and crisp and easy to release from the pan. Perfect. Let's just hang on a second. Yeah. This is so vibrant and beautiful. This is a centerpiece. It really is. It really is a it's nice looking dish. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna taste just as good as it looks. It's beans. Oh, you can see that little bit, the browning of the rice there. See that? Yep. That's our sakarat. That's what we're talking about. You want some of that beautiful cauliflower. Well, first things first. Getting that sakarat. Getting a little bit of that sakarat. Mm. Yeah. Mmm. This is truly one of my all-time favorite vegetarian recipes. I mean, so much depth of flavor, so much complexity. And you know you're talking to me. Yeah, I know who I'm talking to. <laughs> and I gotta say, yes, it happens to be vegetarian, but it's so, so, I mean, just so filling and satisfying. Mm -hmm. With the chunky vegetables. They're not falling apart. The vegetables are not mush. I mean, you look at this bean here inside and it looks meaty and but tender. Mm -hmm. mm. The, the rice is beautifully cooked. Mm -hmm. Full of flavor from that sofrito. Well, thank you, Becky. My pleasure. So if you want to make this a beautiful, vibrant, delicious pie at home, it starts with building flavor right in the skillet. Saute cauliflower and green beans until they're well browned. Use tomato paste to make a savory cooking broth. And top the rice with butter beans and the sauteed vegetables. So from America's Test Kitchen, a truly stupendous and satisfying cauliflower and bean paella. It's gorgeous. Thank you. There's the sangria. Mm. Now you're talking. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.